But you know, there are many things that you said, and we're going to. I would love for us to delve, maybe break it down a bit more. And Pedro, I'd like you to, you know, and Pedro, just step in here as well with regards to some of the things that Pastor Mildred has highlighted. Number one, very importantly, was what she learned from Vashti. So we'd done a whole day of speak, well, a whole evening of speaking about Vashti, what could or couldn't have been, and what Esther learned. Beyond that, very importantly, was how to marry a great person. I know, as Pedro you said earlier on, it's not just about it's not just one way. It is how to marry a great person as a man feeling secure enough. And I'm glad that Pastor Mildred talked about it already, how the king demonstrated in latter parts of the scripture that he was securing himself as king. He didn't feel that in giving Esther half of the kingdom, she was going to become unruly or she was going to lose her head. So he was comfortable enough. So both ways, as a woman, what you do, because how many of us want to marry great men? Okay, maybe actually, how many of us don't want to marry great men? <laughs> All right, so we want to marry greatness or we are married or we want to, we want to bring out the greatness in the man that we are married to. How, what are the, what, what are the, what, what character, what traits would you possess? That's one. And as a man, you want to be handed a great gift like Esther because Esther was a gift. Do we agree? It's not every man that can handle and harness and nurture that gift. As a man, how do you nurture that gift? How do you, what kind of men are married to Esther's? Okay, why I don't know why you just took me away from the 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 course I was attending right Sorry. now, but it's okay. Because, I mean, you said a couple of things, uh, Pastor Ayo, and I'll try to touch on a few. Then we'll hand the button back to our guest for tonight, because you know when you when you get Pastor Mildred, just get everything you can get at at least for the evening. You had mentioned it today. We are gender fluid, not in the sense that the world knows gender fluidity. We are. We are speaking to both genders. We're speaking to the men and to the women. There is a, she said, there is a protocol. There's a way to marry a great person. And the seed of greatness is in each and every one of us. So what that means is that as a believer, we must therefore understand the protocol of marrying each other that the Lord will lead us to. You know, when we get to the point where we begin to be so insecure we can't let the other fly and we begin to compete one with another it is best to be single and compete with yourself so that you don't go and stop anybody's destiny whether male or female right and Pastor Mildred appealed that we keep it very practical I remember the first day I met uh, my wife I'll be, I'll be married 11 years in the next couple of weeks I'm in kindergarten. Don't ask Pastor Dell. Pastor Dell, I'm just, I'm just shadowing Pastor Dell and Pastor Mildred. Pastor Mildred is 18, right? 17, and he, he is in the decades. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Pastor Jude, mention my own now. Uh, I know. I'm saying you're in kindergarten. Yeah, you are in preparatory class. <laughs> You'll get there. But my point again is, from the first day I met her, no, I understood that this one is a king, irrespective of her gender, right? studying in medical school, looking all frail and rough on all the edges. I knew. So that even till like two, three weeks ago, and she's doing great where she's at. But I kept reminding her. I keep reminding her that you're in transition. So we must build capacity on this one you're doing because this is practice ground for where you're going to. So, so, so she, she steps out of the house to go have meetings with ministers, with governors, right? And in my bedroom, they're having conversations with governors, with ministers, with, and, and, and sorry babes, I didn't, I didn't mean to do this, but, but if you are that guy that you have not dealt with you <laughs> to smile and say, that's my girl. That's right. And when she's done, you say, you did great at this, but don't sell yourself short. I was going to say, your head has to be correct because the moment you stand in the way of God's child, then you are resisting God himself. There is a destiny, there is a purpose, and this goes both ways. We see subtly couples begin to compete. I get, your, I get masters, so you go get your own masters. It's good to encourage one another, build one another up. But by the time we begin to mark register for each other, and the I and the me begins to come in. When she said it, Zexy said, I'll give you half the kingdom. No threat. So, Pastor Mildred, you are going to build on that fact. How did Esther build herself 
to the point of acceptance. I, have my, I said I have my own question, Pastor Del. Yes. We'll come back to you. To the point of acceptance, what did Mordecai do to that lady? That she stood before the king of Medes and Persia, the king himself, and he soon began to play with two noble men like chess pieces. Come back for another meal. It's not food that the king has not eaten before. What built this woman to the point where she knew that though I have them in my palms, but tact and timing is still key in this matter. What do we need to do? My, my own question. I'm not done. What do we need to do to get to that point of security to know that this is my tough. I am a slave girl here, but the fact that my feet is in this boardroom I have no imposter syndrome. I, I don't come. I don't come. I have arrived. And the purpose of God over this small slave girl's life must be fulfilled. No fear, no dread. How did Esther get to that point? Those are my own questions. Pastor, you're sorry. I took more Okay. Um, I think I started with it. That Mordecai was very intentional in parenting her. I think that, you know, for the Jews, the Jews are also very in touch. Well, from the scriptures shows us that they were very in touch with their covenant with God. So even though they were slaves at the time, they knew who God was. Um, I think we lose our sense of God sometimes because of how the world is now. But at the time, God was everything to them, such that they would bring offerings. It was, it was such a simple principle. If God wasn't accepting their offerings, they would know. It was so, they were so clear on their identity. The fact that they had a covenant with God controlled everything that they did. So. Mordecai was intentional in parenting her. Like I said before, he brought her up as a Jew, not a slave. He, he kept that thing out of... If you, if you look at that story, I mean, read between the lines, you can see that he told her, don't say who you are when you get there. Don't let them define you. Don't define yourself. Sometimes we walk into situations and we already say, I'm, you know, I'm the youngest person in this place or I'm the smallest person in this place. And that happened a lot through scriptures. We're like grasshoppers before them. Yeah in our own eyes and then in their own eyes too but that's not true the people were afraid of them it was how they saw themselves so he was very clear don't go there and define yourself don't go there and say i'm a slave girl so if she put that in front she wouldn't have been able to compete at the same level with them so he was very intentional about parenting her intentional about pumping in the right thing into her and then she also understood and i think this is where we need to you know really pay close attention she i said it before she understood the power of mentoring she saw where mentoring had brought her, but there's only so far that Mordecai can take her. Mordecai couldn't go into the harem with her. So she had to submit herself to someone else. You can have many teachers. So she had to submit herself to someone else. And when she became queen, nothing changed. Mordecai would come every day and check up on her. So every day he would still come and have conversations with her. Are you okay? Are you doing this? Hope you haven't told them. Hope you haven't defined yourself. Hope you have. He kept on, he was still present in her life. And a lot of times, we outgrow some of our teachers a bit too quick if you ask me and so we end up when we get to the place where we are now in quote royalty we haven't even attained perfection but we're in quote royalty in our own eyes we start to criticize those we should be learning from and i think that that has become one of the things that we're very good at in this generation we go on social media and, and bring out all the mistakes our fathers have made all the well you see you can never really say what you would do if you were in their shoes so instead of complaining or criticizing them, we should be learning from them. And so this girl, even though she was in, in the palace, her, her uncle would come every day without fail. Which was why she noticed something was wrong when he came in ash, ash, um, sackcloth and ashes. And she immediately wanted to solve the problem by, no, I, I must cover my uncle. This, the man said, that's not what we're here for. You want to cover him? You think you're safe? There's a bigger problem. This is not what we're doing here. Solve the problem. And so he, he, he also still demanded from her not to forget why she was put there. They are always about purpose. Read everywhere you read in the scriptures about the Jews. They are very, they are purposeful people. They always know why they are somewhere. They always know what they are doing. They are never anywhere by chance. He said to her, maybe you were born for such a time as this. There's a reason why you are here. Now, I know that a lot of times we talk about how um, God used her to save her people. But I also think that God used her to preserve her legacy. Because remember, the king was her husband. If he had messed up, if he had been the king that killed all the Jews, that would be her legacy as well. So God used her to save her husband as well. It wasn't only her people. God used her to save her husband. Now make sure you are not the one because God will come after anyone who touches his people. So the king would have been wiped out. 
but it was just her. So a lot of times we look at her, oh, the king was instrumental. She was very instrumental in saving two people. So her marriage was not just about her. And this is one of the reasons why I always say that marriage is not a reward, it's an assignment. She went into that marriage knowing fully well that I'm going to be, be here to save my people, but I'm also here to preserve my husband's legacy. This man was an unbeliever, remember. She had a difficult assignment to go and tell her husband that this thing you're about to do is going to be bad. A lot of times we can't even correct our spouses because we don't want them to feel bad. We don't want them to be angry. We don't want them to look at us a certain way. They don't, we don't want them to think we're proud. But she knew that this thing had to be done. So what did she do? Even though the word prayer and God is never mentioned in the book of Esther, not once. But when she said, fast for me, I believe she insinuated prayer. Maybe it was code for them at that time. Because you couldn't come out and say that you were, you were Jew. And there, there were certain things Jews were known for. Prayer. They would pray a certain number of times a day. Mordecai would not even bow to anybody but God. So he was known as Mordecai the Jew, which means this is how these people are. So she, already, she was already raised in a certain way. So I believe that parenting was instrumental to everything that happened in her life. Wow. That Mordecai knew that this girl, I'm not going, it was, it was very clear, her parents died, but they said he took her in. And I believe that he took her in and was intentional about parenting her, telling her this is who you are. And this is what I think we must do with our children. Remind them who you are, this is who you are. You are greatness, you shouldn't take this, you, shouldn't, you, can't, you can't indoctrinate them from when they are young. You must be very intentional about it. Those are the children that do well in the future. Thank you, Pastor Mildred.